When someone consoles you in a demanding way, it is called pity. It is common for abusive people to use pity to invalidate and devalue you. For example, imagine that Imagine the abusive person in your life said something that made you cry and responded to her cry- crying by saying, Oh, look at you, you are such a mess. Or, wow, wow, it must be so hard being you. This would be considered pity. How can someone protect themselves when something like this happens? Yeah, that that's <laughs> that's infuriating for someone to hear uh when when and someone speaks to them that way uh that that probably adds more fuel to the fire i think um it doesn't help the individual at all when someone speaks to them that way um you know i think sometimes you have to kind of step out of that situation um if if you're getting at that point where you know, you're feeling like being in that environment at that moment when that person's saying that to you is, is really um, making things a lot worse. Um, and and it, it is helpful to walk away, um, go outside, go, you know, for some fresh air if you can, go for a walk and, 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 and maybe not address it at the moment because you may not be in the right state of mind to have that conversation and it might come out differently. Uh, but then you can always go back. And I always tell people, you can always go back. You know, someone said something to you a week ago that upset you, but you weren't ready to say something to them that time. You can go back and say, you know, last month or last week, you know, you 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 said something to me uh, when I was feeling really bad. Um, and um, it really made me feel worse than, you know, I don't know if your attempt was to make me feel better and be supportive, but that's not how I feel supportive. And, um, you know, this would have been a much more supportive response uh, than than what you said. And I think it's important to address it when you're, you're able to kind of put those thoughts clearly, sometimes even writing it down on, on a notepad, like, how do you know, how do you express yourself to your partner in a way where they understand it? Um, when you're more calm, and also they're calm, right? Because, when people are um, in an agitated or intensely emotional state, their brain doesn't receive information uh, well at all. You know, you just kind of block everything out. So they, there's that 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 there's a statement that a phrase that's been that used a lot is you really want to listen to understand the person uh, versus listening to respond to uh, the person, right? So if I'm listening to understand, I'm trying to understand your point of view. I'm being empathetic versus being sympathetic and just kind of pitying the other person. It's a different process. And so when I'm listening to understand, I'm not trying to come back with something to give you. I'm not giving you a solution. I'm just listening to say, oh, I'm hearing that you're feeling bad about this. I'm hearing that this is what's going on. That person feels supported and listened to. Um, And if the partner's not doing that, then um, they need to be, you know, they, they need to become aware that it's not helpful. You know, their responses, their communication to you is not helping you feel better. It's actually helping you, making you feel worse. And that's why I think it's important to communicate that to that other individual that, that um, behaves in that, that manner. 